shooting Saturday night has become a major cause for concern on campus. We're going to fill you in on what happened and how the school and city have responded. Plus, Pygmalion Festival is back for its 11th year, and it didn't just feature musical acts. We'll detail the growing popularity of the Maid Festival. And a group of traveling lumberjacks were in the area this week. They shared what it's like to be a woodsman on the road. Your UI7 news break starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, this is your UI7 News Break. Hello and welcome to your UI7 News Break. I'm Jeff Omer. And I'm Rachel Anosi. Thank you for joining us today. We have a developing story this morning. The Champaign Police Department held a press conference at 10 o'clock this morning regarding Saturday night shooting. There, they announced an arrest warrant has been issued for 18-year-old Champaign resident Robbie Patton for first-degree murder. Patton is considered armed and dangerous, and it is believed he is still somewhere in the Champaign-Urbana community. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Patton or additional details about the shooting, contact the Champaign Police Department at 217-351-4545 or police at champaignillinois.gov. Residents of Campus Town at the University of Illinois were shaken from their regular Saturday night activities as a scary scene unfolded near a popular section of Champaign. At approximately 12.38 p.m., gunshots were heard in the 300 block of East Green Street. We rushed to the scene to find out more about the shooting. After gunshots were reported, several police officers arrived at the scene and blocked off the area. Ten minutes later, I see ten car cars coming over here, loud noises, with like fire energy sounds buzzing all over the place. The morning after, Chief of Police Jeff Christensen released the following statement. Preliminary investigation suggests that an argument took place during an apartment party. The argument transitioned outside, where a fight broke out and shots were fired. Yeah, go around the block. Sorry. Students who were on Green Street heard the gunshots, but didn't think anything of it. We didn't think they were gunshots. Like, it's downtown Champaign. Like, you would expect gunshots like fireworks or just loud noises. Like, we thought nothing of it. Four people were found with gunshot wounds, and another was hit by a car when running from the scene. A 22-year-old man lost his life from the shooting as his injuries were fatal. Champaign police are still searching for the suspect and urge anyone who has any information to contact them. More information has been coming out about one of the victims from the shooting. George Korchev was just 22 years old when he tragically lost his life Saturday night. Police say he was not involved in the shooting and was just walking by when the events unfolded. Korchev was from Mundelein, Illinois, a suburb roughly 35 miles northwest of Chicago. He was supposed to begin his career as a registered nurse on Monday at Libertyville's Advocate Condell Medical Center. Champaign's Market Street was transformed into a street fair over the weekend. UI7's Peter Bailey Wells details the popularity of Pygmalion's Maid Fest. For Rob Zavirin, the Pygmalion Festival is first and foremost a business opportunity. Size, Pygmalion and the Maid Fest is really good. Um, but we do ones that have hundreds of vendors, um, stretch over miles. Zavirin was one of more than 40 vendors at Pygmalion's Maid Fest. The two-day open-air market ran Friday and Saturday afternoons. Also selling wares at Maid Fest were Champagne's Rumors Hat Shop, Weiss Camp Screen Printing, and a variety of artists and craftspeople. Made Fest first appeared at Pygmalion in 2013 and has nearly doubled from its original 25 vendor market. Some Pygmalion attendees were more focused on the musical events, but the Made Fest drew their attention. I mean, we went by here before, but you know, now we're actually taking a look at the Made Fest today. This year's Pygmalion music lineup included EDM duo Lewis the Child and Def Jam Records rapper Vince Staples. The festival's final shows were Saturday night and cleanup began Sunday morning. The Maid Fest drew a steady stream of customers despite weekend temperatures in the 80s. Several customers returned on Saturday after watching music shows on Friday and picking out objects in booths that they walked by on their way to the show. 
For Zavirin, Maidfest was all business. At the close of the festival, he went to pick up a whiskey barrel from a local bar. That barrel could wind up as an end table for sale at next year's festival. In Champaign, Peter Bailey Wells, UI7 News Break. Coming up after the break, we'll be highlighting an event that provides free lights to local bike riders, as well as coverage of Illinois hockey's first home game of the season. Then, we'll take you inside the life of a traveling lumberjack. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, <laughs> you're not the typical kind of kid. Well, you said stand I... by. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. I'm so Your funny. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Hello and welcome back to your UI7 News Brief. Many students rely on their bicycles to get around campus, but traveling at night can be dangerous. UI7's Cassandra Smith has more about how an event is shedding some light on this problem by giving riders free bike lights. Bike riders gather around Alma Mater as well as down Wright Street to receive their free bike lights. These two-wheel chariots are outfitted with blinking LED lights that are attached to the front handlebars as well as the back underneath the seat. This event is sponsored by the Champaign-Urbana Mass Transit District as well as the Bike Project. Lily Wilcock is the Active Transportation okay, Coordinator so at the University of Illinois. Good. Wilcock says this free service is to help educate riders as well as keep them safe. And what we do here is we install 1,090 bike lights. So everything that we can get for all of our money's worth. We install them, we give them out for free. We want to educate cyclists on the law. And so we're going to put these lights on bikes, make sure that everyone is safe on the road because the Center for Disease Control says that both retroreflective clothing as well as blinking lights will make sure that everyone stays safe. The law for bike lights in it's Illinois is that front lights need to be visible for at least 500 feet at night and other precautions that must be taken are having a clear front reflector as well as a red rear reflector that is visible up to 600 feet. Amanda Lee is a graduate student who has been biking on campus for three years. Lee gives some ideas on how students should be able to be safe on their bikes. At night, definitely the lights, um, staying to the side of the road, letting cars go first, you know, not trying to cut them off. Those are the big things. Lee adds that she still has some things to work on to guarantee her safety. Um, well, I'm starting with the light. I hadn't had one for like, what, three years? So I just got that and I can ride at night. Uh, using signals, trying to do that better. Um, and keeping my brakes working because I just got them fixed. So it's much better now, but. <laughs> and so these lights will make sure that everyone, whether on a bike or in a car, stays yeah. safe. In Urbana, Sandra Smith, UI7 News Break. The University
University of Illinois D2 hockey team had their home opener game this weekend against the DePaul Blue Demons. The Illini swept the competition away Friday night with the 5-2 final score against the Blue Demons. Illinois D2 hockey is a student-run collegiate club hockey organization. Illinois will play 28 regular season games in the upcoming season. They are hoping to build their success by earning a spot in the MACHA League playoffs in February of 2017. The game had a late night with the puck dropping after 10 o'clock p.m. at the Illinois Ice Arena. You can catch their next home game against Marquette University September 30th at 10 p.m. Golf legend Arnold Palmer died on Sunday at the age of 87. Palmer was one of the greatest golfers of all time and will be remembered greatly by the entire golf community. Palmer was admitted to UPMC Presbyterian Hospital in Pittsburgh on Thursday where he was undergoing heart tests. He passed away in the hospital on Sunday afternoon. Palmer will be remembered for his seven major wins and 96 overall tournament wins. Palmer's supporters were known as Arnie's Army, which includes his loyal followers that have spanned across decades and generations. Palmer is a golf legend, but he'll also be remembered for his famous mixed drink of iced tea and lemonade. Champaign-Urbana is not known for its forests, but woodsmen were in town this weekend. UI7's Jeff Omer introduces you to a traveling lumberjack. I've been around timber sports my whole life. Caleb Graves is a professional lumberjack. He travels all over the United States competing and entertaining crowds. This is the life he's known since the age of nine. It all started in a small Wisconsin town. In Hayward, where I'm from, they have a local log rolling school, much like uh, children would go play basketball or something at a boys and girls club. In Hayward, you log roll, and that's how I got started. Graves' young interest in log rolling was only the beginning. Over the past two and a half years, he has worked on the axe throw, springboard chop, and speed climb with a touring lumberjack company. Dave Weatherford has been in the business for over 20 years. He says he is impressed with the growth of Graves over this time. And Caleb, I've seen a great uh, uh, improvement in his chopping ability. He's more disciplined uh, than he has been a couple of years ago with his, with his chopping event. So it's nice to see him come along that way. Graves is still adapting to the life of a lumberjack on the road. He says the toughest part is the daily travel that keeps him moving around the nation. Last year I was in California, Virginia, West Virginia. Ohio. I try to make the best of it every day, no matter how tired I am or wherever I'm at. Graves says his passion for timber sports is lifelong. He uses his time on the road to teach the sports value to others. What he enjoys most is the tight-knit lumberjack community. It's just brought so many positive things to my life and the people I've been able to meet. And it's just awesome. The next stop for Graves and his team is Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. In Champaign, Jeff Omer, UI7 Newsbreak. Lumberjacking isn't the only hobby kids are starting at a young age. One Illinois sixth grader took on a pumpkin farm, and she's pretty good at it, too. 11-year-old Karina Atkins of Wheaton, Illinois, started growing pumpkins last year and found success on her first try. A year later, and she is now growing multiple pumpkins, which weigh almost 700 pounds more than last year's. While her dad does help make sure that animals don't eat the large vegetables, most of the work is done all by her. Although Karina just started growing pumpkins for fun, she plans to enter this year's in the Monsters of the Midway Giant Pumpkin Way Off in Indiana to see how good she really is. A nine-month-old giraffe got quite friendly with TV reporter Ashley Jacobs of KFMB while at the San Diego Zoo on Friday. She was covering a weekend event when she came face-to-face -face with the baby giraffe. What was supposed to be one last beauty shot of the baby giraffe and then instead in a long and cuddly interaction with Jacobs and the animal. Along with smiles and laughter, Jacobs pleaded for privacy as the giraffe continuously shoved his head into her chest and lower back. After a couple of last licks of endearment, the giraffe finally backed off and gave the merry reporter her space. So that giraffe is so cute. I wish I was the reporter and had that happen. At the same time, yeah, but I wouldn't want an animal so close to me like that. I, mean, I like my I space. I guess, but they're so cute. <laughs> well, thank you guys for tuning in to this edition of UI7 Newsbreak. Feel free to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and keep tuned to our website as well for any news. I'm Jeff Omer. And I'm Rachel Anosi. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.